this summer and there are many reasons for it which I will explain when we get to the studio but let's begin at the beginning come this way begin at the beginning <laughs> The welcoming uh, healing the heart medicine. Last fall and winter, I knew I wanted a medicine meal to welcome this with. And uh, so slowly, by myself, you can feel the muscles. <laughs> I'm it's ten foot in diameter, two feet high. I built the rock circle, and I didn't really know what kind of medicine meal I wanted it to be. And so I did a lot of research in different traditions, um, Native American, Buddhist, Tibetan, all different, and different cultures. And, and um, this winter, um, when my brother, to whom I was very close, suddenly died, I knew sometime shortly thereafter that there had to be a healing in the heart. So, all the plants are symbolic of healing the heart. There's love in a mist, Artemis from, from the goddess. I made all the mosaic steppings out there, the cardinal points, north, south, east, west, with the, my own interpretation and synthesis of all my research. Uh, I, the, that's also a mosaic planter I've done. All the plants, the geranium is a heart healer. Um, the red carnations, which will be up next summer, uh, it's said that the Virgin Mary, Mary, when she saw Jesus on the cross, her tears fell on a white carnation and turned it red. So it's a mother's love is a red carnation. And I put uh, Love Lies Bleeding, which is amaranth in the center. And you can see they're about this big. Usually when I've planted amaranth in other parts, it's long and it trails red and it's beautiful and it's lovely. It's clean, perfect amaranth, ancient seed. But it doesn't get enough sun. So you have to go to plan B. So they are about this big. <laughs> and it's not this magnificent weeping red that I imagined. But that's what gardening is. You learn what works where, what doesn't work. I have a Forage for courage. We need courage in order to love. And, and the red basil, in biblical times, women uh, wove basil in their hair to attract love. And I'm sure to smell good because they didn't have hot running water. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the midpoints between the directions are also stones. This is an arrowhead that's Buddha and the butterfly. There's Nefertiti and the bee and there's the male and female hands together. So just walk around and see how you feel about it. I'm and that's, sure. the little purples are called angel face, and if you look in the purple flowers, it looks like a little angel face, they're angelonia. And I think, do you need angels to watch over your love? I've never yes. <laughs> oh, look, these are thistle flowers. Could you say the bees love it? Yeah. The bees go crazy, all different kinds of bees, and then nectar so much that they actually fall asleep on the flower. And there are many flowers like that on the property where the bees just so indulge in the nectar that I find them sprawled out, which is what uh, Eastern Tiger Swallowtail on the garden flocks, and of course the Monarda and that's Rebecca back there. Uh, this is swamp milkweed in the center, and this is regular milkweed. There are about uh, 70 species of milkweed. If you stand back and turn around, look at that. <laughs> that's an Asian dogwood. And I have to say, that was here before. That was one of the few things, uh, the people we got the property from, we were very fortunate they were not into gardening. I mentioned it to someone. Because I had a blank canvas, basically. It blooms incredibly every other year. You know, but I've never mm. seen a dogwood bloom that long. Well. Me neither. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I, I give him my compost. What can I tell you? <laughs> compost is a blessed thing. That is true transformation. Throw a watermelon rind in there, 
and it's fabulous soil. I mean, it's, it is transmit. I do love compost. Uh, and I recommend it highly. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. Yes, the hummingbirds, when you plant for butterflies, the hummingbirds love the same plants. And then I give them a little extra sugar water. And they are like silly tinkerbells. They are just <laughs> delightful. And, and every year they arrive between May 2nd and May 7th. Mm -hmm. yeah. And except last year when it was so hot, they arrived a week early. Yeah. And if I don't have my feeder out, the first yeah. scout goes back and forth in yeah. front of my window. Where's my food? <laughs> because they migrate to South, to Mexico. I've been where they've migrated to. And they return to the same place. 2,500 miles away. These little, it's... And Amazing. they have babies here. What? They have babies here. Yes, and they have babies here. And I all of a sudden you'll have six hummingbirds and then 20, 30, 40 hummingbirds? Yes, yes. And the babies are adorable. And the pregnant, I've seen the pregnant moms. They're like big for hummingbirds. They're, it's fabulous. Okay. All right. I did these planters. They're there for sale and all that. Huh? But uh, all sides, four sides are different. We're just doing a grand and entrance a because a monarch. Oh, híjole, bienvenida. Yes. Oh, I might cry. This is like really. This is a big deal this summer. Come to Mama. Oh, what a blessing! It's a blessing. It's a blessing. All right. This used to be a swimming pool until Grandfather Bear visited my swimming pool last summer. And you know how you crush a tin can. Well, Grandfather Bear, who was hanging out by the cherry tree, about 600 pounds gray, I called him Grandfather Bear. He was gorgeous, gorgeous animal. When he ran, it was like fields of wheat in, in, in the wind, his fur. But he was curious, I guess, and s stood or sat on the pool uh -oh. and absolutely crushed it. <laughs> Insurance guy came, sent an engineer, spent an hour, I couldn't believe it. About, uh, the only thing that could have done this is a bear. But <laughs> they didn't give us money, and I understand. I mean, I what if they gave us money for the pool? And then a week later, the bear would come back. They can't do that. So we no. made a moon garden. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, these are my country version of Loretta Young's steps. <laughs> There's seven <laughs> steps to heaven. Hi, Luciana. You're going to dance with You're me? being followed by the monarch. Oh. <coughs> that is... Oh, Mama. Oh, sweetie, just take a moment. I know where Mommy is. You have no idea how happy you just made me. No idea. Because I was... So, <clears throat> this is a work in progress. I did the moon cycle mosaics. The plants here are moon flowers, Nicotiana. I was hoping that the white hibiscus, which is about to open up with this red tip, was going to grace us because she gets as big as that moon. And please feel free to come down if you'd like. It's a wonderful place to do a moon dance, <laughs> uh, to do Tai Chi. Uh, tai Chi deck, Phil. <laughs> Perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. But okay. Oh, uh, just take a look at that hollyhock. Yeah. That's a hollyhock. Wow. Now the story of hollyhocks, it's just a tradition. It was said that, you know, in in hundred you know, whatever, not even a hundred years ago, when there were just outhouses, that would be people would plant this by their outhouse so that when women came to visit they didn't have to ask where the outhouse was because they could just see where the tall hollyhocks were and they knew where to go. That's great. <laughs> oh, and eastern tiger swallowtail. And hopefully we'll see some uh, black swallowtails and many others and, and summer azures and, and, and Luciana. <laughs> That's Luciana. Hi, you gonna show off for us? Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I, it's just wonderful. The first monarch of the summer. How? 
the tutu on the blueberry bush. Yeah. It's tool. And I Which put... Which is an attempt <laughs> to... I have blueberries this year instead of the birds. Yes. Please. Um, Our I, birds have figured out how to get in the tool. <laughs> really? And so mm -hmm. the lucky people close to me get blueberries because I gave a lot out this morning's tour. <laughs> but it's the first year I've actually had blueberries. Each of the different color of the butterfly bushes smell differently, just like each color lilac smells different. Intoxicated. Do you prune yours all the way down? In Not April? all the way down. I prune them about a third. Okay. And you do it in the springtime? Yes, that's when you should actually February, March before it starts budding out. On a decent day in February or early March. The mushrooms. Yes, it's been a wet year. And uh, my hawthorn tree, I just planted it eight years ago. And uh, someday it will have berries. <laughs>